Hi guys, my name is Elisa and this is the Meeting Stories podcast. And we have a lot of new faces here, or we might have a lot of new faces here. So um, I think that this would be a good moment to um, do a little bit of presentation of myself. I don't know, but uh, well, my name is Elisa. I'm, well, I'm 24 years old, but probably I will publish this video on my birthday. So I will be probably be... Uh, I will probably be 25 years old, um, yeah, don't know how I'm feeling about that, but uh, that's okay. And yeah, I'm from Italy, from northern Italy, I lived uh, near, I uh, lived near Milan, um, but now in this moment uh, I'm based uh, in uh, Amsterdam or close to Amsterdam because um, I started a traineeship I study uh, history of art, museology and curatorship at the University of Bologna back, uh, back in Italy and uh, I have a traineeship here in Amsterdam at a, an art gallery which is just like wonderful, it's the job I would love to do for the rest of my life and yeah, so uh, that's just a little bit about me. And well, yeah, this is the Knitting Stories podcast. I talk about knitting, which is like my favorite hobby, uh, together with going to museum, but that's just another thing. And uh, yeah, I talk about knitting, I talk about my finished objects, uh, work in progress, and uh, uh, I love uh, making plans for knitting. I think that uh, uh, planning knits uh, is just another hobby exactly as knitting and yeah the knitting stories podcast is just the place where I can do all of this and share it with you uh, so yeah this is the fourth episode and I'm just like so thankful uh, for all the people who are, who are following me uh, in this moment because I at the beginning I thought that nobody would have been interested in what I had to say uh, but apparently someone is so yeah that's great and I hope that this podcast will keep you company while you're knitting so grab your knitting or grab a cup of coffee a cup of tea whatever you prefer and just knit with me uh, while I talk about my knits um, so the knitting stories podcast has the classical like podcast uh, kind of structure, that is to say uh, we have uh, finished objects, uh, uh, works in progress uh, and then maybe some knitting plans, but it really depends on the moment. What I would like uh, to do and to say first of all is to is that I see a lot of podcasters who have so many uh, like finished objects and works in progresses works in progress and I'm not like that <laughs> like uh, my life is very busy and I actually need like two hours a day one hour a day or something like that sometimes when it's a good day I will need for like four or five hours but uh, that doesn't happen uh, very often uh, so what I would like you to know is that uh, you shouldn't expect from me like a, I don't know a ton of finished objects uh, and uh, of works in progresses. Most of the times I will have just like one finished object or uh, two finished objects, maybe one garment and one accessory and then I will have like just one or two works in progress it works in progress but most of the time it will be just one because I am mainly a monogamous knitter and I change pro project uh, uh, only if uh, something's bothering me with the project that I'm working on or if that uh, has become like uh, a little bit frustrating or you know boring sometimes it happens uh, and and that's it so just a little bit of a disclaimer um, I don't know why but I I feel that I, I shouldn't be doing this disclaimer like I feel that I have this pressure of producing more and more garments and this is the reason why I'm doing this disclaimer here because 
I don't know, maybe it's what you uh, expect uh, from uh, uh, podcasters to like finish a lot of objects uh, and showing you the uh, finished objects and giving you inspiration. But um, like, I can't do that. I would love to have to, uh, to have more time for knitting, but I actually don't. And I'm very satisfied with, with what I'm producing, with what I'm making at the moment, because I, for this reason, I choose like uh, specific objects, specific patterns that I know that I will wear, that I know that I will love. And I try to choose yarns and colors that are not that are like that I know I will enjoy working and wearing and yeah so that's a bit of a ramble <laughs> already and uh, that's a bit of a presentation about me um, so I think that we can start with uh, finished objects and as I said I have just one uh, so if you remember, if you've seen my uh, previous uh, The Knitting Stories podcast episode, episode number three, I um, was going, I was uh, working on a, on a top for my boyfriend's graduation, which was at the beginning of May. And I finished that top and I wore it at my boyfriend's graduation and uh, I just love it and I'm wearing it today. So what I'm talking about is this beautiful twist look top and yeah, so maybe I should take off my shirt and sorry guys, yeah, so this is, this is it, this is the twist look top, of course the beautiful detail is this one in the middle, this beautiful cable. And it's very funny to do that. Like if you are not, uh, if you do not love, uh, uh, like, uh, ribbing, infinite ribbing, or <laughs> endless uh, uh, stocking it, or endless knit and pearl, I think that this pattern is perfect. Would be perfect for you because sorry, it's a little bit cold here. Um, so I think that this pattern. So I think that this pattern would be perfect for you uh, because with these uh, twist, uh, with these uh, uh, um, cable in the middle, you will be very entertained, I think. Um, so about the pattern, I think it was very clear. Uh, it, by the way, it's the twist looked up by other loops uh, on, uh, on Instagram. And I think that the pattern is very clear. I really enjoyed knitting it. I think that the construction is very um, easy to follow and uh, straightforward. And uh, yeah, I also love the detail of the of the um, you know of the um, collar of the hem here and of the shoulder edge. Uh, this is like I cord while well, this is uh, um, double knitting uh, like you at a certain point you have to fold your your hem and I won't say um, more um, and but I really love the finishing touches like you know it gives a perfect uh, look so the pattern was crazy I, I really loved it and I think that this is one of the most uh, uh, elegant uh, knitted pieces that I have in my wardrobe um, and I really enjoyed it um, maybe the only issue was with the yarn that I chose because actually uh, the yarn which is suggested uh, by the pattern is a cashmere yarn um, which means that it's very expensive and uh, uh, actually I didn't want to spend like 60 euros on a top because at the moment I can't um, and uh, so I went for the knitting for olive cotton merino which I've never tried before I tried I've tried uh, uh, the knitting for olive merino for um, for a vest and I really loved it it was very enjoyable uh, and so I decided, okay, let's just try knitting for olive cotton merino. You know, I want um, a specific neutral shade, which is not this one exactly. Um, 
and I know that Knitting for Olive has a very wide uh, um, uh, range of color of colors so I decided to go with that and I chose the um, the shade Piglet uh, which on the website was a little bit yellowish and this is what I wanted because I would have paired these uh, top for my boyfriend's graduation with a uh, like with a very green, minty green um, blazer and I thought that having um, like uh, a yellowish uh, kind of neutral color would have been would have paired well with uh, uh, that green color but actually when the yarn arrived it was very much um, pink and I was very very worried because uh, my skin tends towards pink and I was worried that it would have seemed like it that the yarn would have seemed of the same would have being of the same color of my skin and actually uh, unfortunately um, like it doesn't seem that way probably because of the ripping and probably because of the um, twist because of the cable in the middle but I was very worried guys uh, but in the end it turned out the best way possible uh, so yeah um, another issue that I have with the that I had with this yarn is that the knitting for olive cotton merino is seventy percent cotton and thirty percent merino, um, and I chose this because I was going to a graduation in Italy, uh, which is very you know there were like twenty five degrees I think at the beginning of May, and so I didn't want to wear anything um, like any uh, kind of winter yarn and merino wouldn't wouldn't have been perfect because we have very hot summers in Italy uh, so I decided to go with the cotton merino uh, and the problem is that probably the high content of cotton makes this yarn very um, I don't know it doesn't keep the 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 top doesn't keep its shape uh, and it tends to enlarge, I would say. I don't know. I had this issue, especially with the um, with the uh, arm, uh, the arm edges. Uh, like in this moment, you can't see my bra, you can't see my underwear except for here. Okay, but this is a problem of blocking. Like I should have stretched it uh, a little bit more. But here. In this moment, you can't see uh, my bra, you can't see my underwear, but that is just because at the beginning, this shoulder, this uh, like uh, arm edge was very, very down uh, here, and I decided like um, I was almost having a breakdown for this reason, but in the end, I had like uh, a revel a sort of revelation. I I told myself, okay, just try putting an elastic through uh, the uh, I-cord uh, edge. And I did that and now it's way much better. So simply know that if you're using Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino for this top, you would probably need to insert some elastic in the um, arm edges. Uh, but that solved the problem and it's very enjoyable to wear like the yarn is not itchy at all but um, like I didn't, I didn't expect anything else because the major component of the yarn is cotton it's 70% cotton so all in all I'm very happy um, I'm very happy also because I can use this um, in a lot of situations like underwear sh uh, under a shirt I also use it as a layering piece under maybe, I don't know, um, uh, sweaters uh, or cardigans uh, and so on. And uh, of course, uh, I will use it as a top during uh, um, during during warmer uh, days. So yeah, for the twist look top, I think that's all. I think I've said any everything. And if you have any questions, of course, uh, write it down below. And uh, yeah, I'll try to answer to everyone. Um, so yeah, as I was telling you, this is my only finished object. Um, this is my only finished object and uh, I have uh, um, two works in progress actually. 
Uh, one is a test knit and the other one is just uh, like another tee. And let me take the test knit. So, this is the test knit. This is, okay, it's a little bit weird because I haven't blocked it and there's there are some parts missing but guys it's a work in, it's a work in progress so uh, this is the bagana bag uh, test knit for pearl girl and i will link her instagram profile down below and uh, um so uh, actually um so the the story of this bag is weird uh no it's not weird it's just like uh, uh the Per, uh, Pearl Girl simply uh, posted a story, if I'm not wrong, on her Instagram about this bag asking like, uh, what do you think about a pattern for this, uh, for this bag? Like, would you like to, um, to knit that if there was a pattern? And I uh, answered her, telling her that it was beautiful, that I would have really loved to knit uh, um, to knit a bag like that, you know, it's like that famous Uniqlo bag that you put like here and you have the strap going around your your body uh, and of course I still need to um, to knit the strap uh, and yeah and she told me oh <laughs> of course she was very happy and asked me if I wanted to test knit uh, her, her pattern so I said yes of course and uh, uh, before moving to Italy, I realized I had some cotton left over uh, because I bought, uh, at the beginning of my knitting journey, I used to uh, buy this big cotton, which is like DK, almost arm weight, I think, uh, which I don't enjoy that much. And I thought it was a very, um, a perfect uh, Tash busting project for this reason because otherwise that cotton would have sit in my yarn stash for forever I think um, and so I started knitting it and I must say that the pattern is very nice uh, like uh, everything's well explained and uh, um, plus uh, everything's well explained plus uh, I think that uh, the construction is very, um, it's very nice, you know, you have these details made with eye cords, uh, again on this side, uh, then you have eye cords here where you will attach your zip to close the bag. And uh, the only thing, but that's just something about me, uh, is that um, to, in order to make this bag you have to need uh, all the pieces separately and then seam uh, and then sew them and like I don't love this kind of project and at a certain point it will I know it will annoy me to seam uh, all the pieces together but I, I tried to do my best so I seamed all I I I sorry I sew I sewn the, the all the pieces together uh, uh, and uh, yeah, now the straps are missing, but I will do them, don't worry. Uh, so yeah, um, about the pattern, I would definitely recommend it, uh, but be aware that you have to knit every piece uh, separately and then sew them together. Uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> so um, this is one of the reasons why I always try to pick uh, uh, patterns that are in the round uh, and so on because I know that at a certain point uh, sewing will be an, a little bit annoying for me but uh, you know it's just a bag it's just an accessory it's nothing major it's nothing big and I thought I could do that and I will finish it also because I think that this is something that I would wear um, that I would use a lot this summer so yeah now the problem why am I not knitting the straps uh, or the strap because I cast it on another project and usually it's not like that usually I try to finish one project and start with another one but in this case I just had the yarn I was just uh, um, you know um, feeling that uh, cast on energy that sometimes we knitters have and so I, I cast it on um, another project uh, which is keeping me uh, very busy and it's this project here. Oh no, gosh, I lost, I lost a stitch. Okay, 
uh, it's this project here, which doesn't seem like much, but I assure you, I knitted a lot. So, this project here. And you know, you can't see very well, but I'm showing you here. Here there's a double edge and then you start with the with the um, stockinette stitch but this project is the Naked Tea by uh, Naked Knits and uh, you know um, I don't know um, like I just wanted to try uh, one of their one of their patterns. Uh, the only thing is that I'm not sure I would wear like a knitted bra uh, or a knitted bra. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I would wear a knitted bra. Uh, maybe this winter I could try. And then they uh, came out with this uh, um, with the, the casual tea that I presented you in my pre in one of, in my previous video, which was all about. Um, spring patterns, spring patterns uh, ideas for um, for a colder spring um, and but then I saw also this naked tea which is like this very um, I think it's a very cozy uh, tea with long sleeves uh, um, very close to the skin and uh, uh, you know it has beautiful uh, beautiful hem detail uh, and uh, I just knew it would be, uh, I just know it, this would be something that I would like to wear every day. So I figured, I imagined myself wearing these, uh, these uh, a tea, uh, like uh, with uh, my um, best number two spring edition over it. And yeah, that was just crazy. And uh, I knew I would wear it uh, uh, every day. Um, so I started knitting it uh, and uh, um, at the beginning, like the, pro the pattern is something I've never tried because first of all, it's knitted, uh, it's knitted uh, uh, bottom up and I've never tried bottom up constructions. Plus the pattern doesn't really give you um, details on how many stitches you have to cast on and so on because the patterns the pattern explains you how to build the perfect t-shirt for your uh, the perfect t for your measurements so it explains you how to measure yourself and according to your measurements how many stitches you need to cast on and in this way i think that uh, uh, yes it's still the first time for me uh, but I think that the type of garment uh, that you could uh, uh, obtain with this kind of pattern would be, could be and has the potential to be like the perfect garment for you because of course there's no standardization uh, and you can personalize, you can customize your piece according to your measurements, according to your preferences. Like I don't know if you would like to have uh, like wider uh, a wider bust circumference, but uh, also a um, uh, narrower waist circumference. You could do that through this technique. And I really, I really loved it. I'm really enjoying it. The, the problem is with the yarn uh, again because. Like the yarn is very thin, you see here, can you see that? It's like, uh, I don't know, embroidery thread or something like this, not certainly a knitting thread. Uh, so about the yarn, uh, I can't really tell you which yarn it is because uh, I uh, bought it um, in a, like, let's say this, in, uh, in Italy there's this lady who travels all around Italy uh, to the uh, industries we produce um, like uh, yarn and uh, she collects uh, all the remainings and all the um, like lots that cannot be uh, sell by these industries because I don't know they have imperfections or maybe they are slightly different from the standards and uh, she buys them 
and she sells them again at a lower price. Of course, you can't know what yarn you're buying. She can tell you like the composition. For example, I know that this yarn is 100% um, uh, wool. And uh, uh, yeah, I don't know which um, like which company uh, pro uh, uh, has produced it. But um, yeah, like I decided to buy this yarn from her because it really caught my eye. Be um, there was like a gauge swatch of this yarn and even if this yarn is very thin, uh, in the, ga the gauge swatch showed that uh, when, you wash the, when you wash and block it, uh, it really pumps up, it fills the gaps. And I really enjoyed this because I think that this uh, specific, this specificity of the yarn, and also the fact that it's not that regular. Like as you can see here, there are some bumps uh, and there are some parts of the thread which are um, much more thin. Uh, and I think that this uh, feature of the yarn uh, gives uh, something special to this finished uh, top. Uh, uh, so to this this finished tea, which otherwise it would be like a very staple tea, which is what I like. Like I love staple pieces, but if I can give them something more, or like that touch, that personal touch, I'm like I'm happy. That's what I'm here for. Uh, so I bought 200 um, grams of this yarn because she suggested me to buy so. Um, and I spent only 8 euros, so this naked tea will be just 8 euros for me. And I'm very happy too because the yarn it doesn't feel itchy at all. Um, even if it's so thin, it's not like damaging my, uh, my hands. Usually my hands are a little bit sensible um, to, um, to itchy yarn, but actually I can wear every kind of yarn even more without feeling itchiness at all so i'm not very worried for that but the original yarn which the uh, pattern asked for called for was um, cashmere and again i cannot buy cashmere at, in this moment of my life because it's very expensive and i'll definitely do um, and knit myself something with cashmere in the future but just not now maybe when i'll have like a job which will pay me and not an internship um, yeah that's life guys so at the moment I'm knitting the tube for the body we can say so since it's bottom up now we have endless stockinette stitch and I'm working on this every evening while I'm watching TV or Netflix and, and things like that because like a stockinette is mindless uh, for me but I think for most of for most knitters and but I know that when I will come to the armpits and I'll have to separate for the front and the back I will have to measure myself many times and I will have to uh, try on the garment many times and for this reason I will probably mm, knit on these only during the weekdays and during the weekend because during the weekdays I'm like writing my thesis and uh, doing my job and so it will be harder and I know that in the, in the evening I don't have the strength to try on my garment I just want to knit while I'm, while I'm I don't know, on the sofa, on the couch or uh, whatever so yeah, <laughs> um, that's all for my works in progress as I told you, I don't have much. I just had like one finished object and two works in progress. But um, you know, sometimes I feel the um, I feel like the pressure of producing more, and I think that a lot is due to this channel, like to YouTube, because I follow, of course, a lot of YouTubers here on Instagram, uh, here on YouTube, but also over on Instagram. And I see that they produce so many garments and oh my gosh, I don't even know how they can and how they manage to do that. Um, and so sometimes I feel the pressure to produce as much as them because I think, okay, if you have a podcast, you should be able to show 
uh, a lot of objects and a lot of finished objects and a lot of works in progress to your audience. But I'm like, is that what you really want? Would you really be able to produce, I don't know, 20 garments a month? Like, that's an exaggeration, of course, but I want. That's not my knitting pace, we can say. I love working at, on one project at a time. I love finishing one project and start, and only after that starting another one. And that's what I'm doing. I don't know, there are different knitting styles and this is my knitting styles and maybe it's not yours. And so, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not saying that I don't feel that chaotic custom energy. Uh, of course, sometimes it, it, it's there, but for me, it's mostly about enjoying the process. And for this reason, I'm very aware of what I'm choosing to knit, of what, uh, which yarn I'm choosing to knit with. And yeah, uh, so it's a lot about the process. It's a lot about the fact that when I'm knitting, I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm thinking about how I'm purling and how I'm knitting. And it really helps me focusing on something else and not on like, you know, stress and life preoccupations or things like that. So I don't think I really have to apologize if I don't have many items to show you. Um, and of course, I love watching other, other podcasters who have so many knitting projects because I find them so uh, uh, inspiring, I think. Uh, like, they give me so much inspiration and they give me, uh, like, also it's very motivating to watch other people knitting and to watch other people go on with their projects. Uh, so yeah, but this is just my knitting pace and it's like that. Maybe if you're like me, you'll understand me. So this was all to say that uh, even if now I have this podcast, um, I don't think I'll change anything in my knitting uh, sh schedule, we can say. Uh, I will keep on knitting with my pace and yeah, that's all. That's a big ramble. Uh, but yeah, I also have uh, some uh, um, knitting projects, uh, like before uh, going away, before moving to the Netherlands, I bought the Farnham Tea Pattern and I am very tempted to cast on the uh, Farnham Tea Pattern. By the way, I still don't have any yarn for the Farnham Tea Pattern because there was no space in my luggage. Um, so, but I'm really thinking about casting on the Farnham T because I really love the pattern. I've never knitted anything striped. I really love how the stripe the stripes meet um, on the shoulders. So the shoulder detail is something amazing. Um, I don't know anything else. But uh, actually, uh, in the last days, it was. A little bit warmer here in the Netherlands so I'm thinking that maybe it would be better for me to uh, maybe cast on a tea and I was thinking about the mod tea which I showed you in my in my previous videos about video about uh, uh, knitting pattern ideas for uh, a colder spring or also I saw the poppy tea uh, by my favorite uh, by of course uh, petit knit and I'm thinking that I really love that staple piece again. <laughs> um, so I just need to understand if I want something more casual or if I want something more elegant like the Moti. Uh, so now I'm very... Um, my doubt is on... is what should I cast on? Should I cast on a sweater or should I cast on a tee? Um, so this will be my choice. About the yarn, like usually for my birthday, my boyfriend lets me choose some yarn and he buys me some yarn. So that will be my birthday gift. And we will see. Of course, if you have any recommendation, if you have, uh, I don't know, if you've ever tried knitting the Moti, the Poppy Tea or the Farnam sweater, please comment down below. Tell me if you enjoyed the pattern. Tell me if you found, found any... Uh, I don't know, issue with the pattern, if you have some suggestion, because that's always welcome. 
and yeah i think that's all for these uh, for this video uh, a lot of rambles i think but uh, yeah sometimes i just feel like telling you something more about what's going on in my mind and so guys um i think that this was all for this uh, for this episode episode number four as i told you this episode will probably be published on my birthday and now i really hope uh, I will be able to um, to uh, edit this video in time because it's the third time I'm telling you I will edit this I will publish this video on my birthday which is the 24th of May and so since it's my birthday today or I don't know when you'll see this video just do something for yourself and take a biscuit and take a cookie uh, eat a slice of cake or do something and um, and yeah, and of course, knit. Have a big knitting online party and just have fun with me because it's my birthday. Um, I love sweets and I will definitely spend my birthday knitting and eating sweets. Don't know how healthy that is, but that's okay. And uh, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, thank you very much for following me, for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't done that uh, yet, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can also follow me, follow me on Instagram. My handle is at Elisa Knitting Stories. And yeah, please give a like to this video if you liked it. And... Um, I think that now it's really all. Thank you so much for watching and I don't know guys, happy knitting and yeah, that's it.